Hey guys, so in today's video, we're gonna talk about drawing up pediatric code medication doses using a stopcock from our pre-filled syringes. So to get started, what do we actually need and how do we go about doing it? So we've got three different types of pre-filled syringes here in our code carts. We've got atropine, we've got calcium, and we've got epinephrine. And this is the one that we're gonna focus most on because uh, this is the most commonly used. So what else do we need? We have our epinephrine syringe, we get a report that a patient is coming in in cardiac arrest. We know it's a pediatric patient and we're starting to get prepared. So what do we actually need to get together? What do we need to know? When we know that kids, everything is weight-based, right? So we need to be able to get a weight as early in the resuscitation as possible. And how do we do this? I mean, we can't put them on a scale. So we need to use our Braslow tape, right? We need to measure out our child to see what their height is, which will give us a rough correlation of what their weight is. And it does all the work for you. Red arrow goes to the top of the head. Here we go. Red arrow goes to the top of the head. And then this expands. And it's pretty large. So you would lay this next to the, the pediatric patient. And then wherever their heels fell, you would be able to see that that's what their weight is. So if we went here and we said, okay, patient's heels fell right here, right? 17 kilos. Okay, now I have a number. Now what's really great about the Braslow tape is that you have all of these different colors and all of the colors correspond with a different set of weights. But what it'll tell you is pieces of equipment, medication doses that are appropriate for a child this size, okay? So this is a really great tool that you wanna keep out during your resuscitation. You don't wanna just get your weight based off of the height and then put this away. You really want this out and present. So now we know we have our 17 kilo patient, okay? Now here's a fun fact that works with Epi. It only works with the code syringe of Epi, so the one milligram and 10 mLs, and you have to have the weight in kilograms. But what you do is you take your patient's weight in kilograms, so we came up with 17, right? We move the decimal point over one space to the left. So it goes from 17 to 1.7. 1.7 is how many mLs you're going to give out of this code syringe. And that works for any weight. You have a 32 kilo patient, they're going to get 3.2 mLs from this code syringe. And you have a 11 kilo patient, 1.1 mLs. 5 kilo, 0.5 mLs. All you do is move that decimal point one place to the left with code epinephrine and your kilogram, your weight in kilograms. Okay? It's just a quick trick to help you to remember, but you always have this Braslow tape. So please, please, please use your resources. So now I know I need to give 1.7 mLs, which is a pretty small dose, right? So let's go ahead and get this open. <clears throat> There's a couple ways to open if you haven't opened one of these in a while. If you open at the top, what happens is there is a piece of cardboard inside that's holding part of the syringe in place. So if you open it this way, it doesn't come out, okay? Which can lead to a lot of frustrations in a code, especially if you don't um, participate in codes very often, right? So just Always look for the little cheat sheet open at the bottom. It'll pop it open and everything will slide right out. Okay. So putting this together, you've got our, our two ends. You want to pop both of those off. So you just pop. Okay. And then these screw together. All right. And then as with an adult, you know, most of the time we go ahead and we flush it through all this dead space. So you just want to make sure that you get Epi all the way up to the end here. Oh, this can happen too. This is another caveat. My very first code, this went completely gone and all I had was this needle and I was totally freaking out because I'm like how do I get this needle and the lower lock and their IV so I'm glad that fell off because that can actually happen um but there we go we want to make sure that we prime our epi all the way to the top okay but you can see here that these ml readings they're not very accurate so you wouldn't be able to give 1.7 mls from this now you could give maybe two-ish, but that's not really accurate. You can't really even give one, I mean, you could try to give one and a half, but again, not accurate. So best practice, this is best practice, is to use a stopcock. <clears throat> so what else do you need? You need a stopcock. And then you also need a syringe that's appropriately sized, okay? So if I'm giving 1.7 mLs, I'm gonna choose to use a three mL syringe, okay? Because 1.7 falls in between one and three. Now, if I was giving less than one mL, then I would go ahead and elect to use my one ml syringe, right? Because if I'm only giving say 0.6 mLs, I really want it to be accurate. I'm gonna use my one ml syringe so I can accurately drop 0.6 ml. Let's say I was giving more than three mLs. I was giving 3.7, 37 kilo kit, 3.7 mLs. 
I would use my 5 ml syringe. So whatever syringe is appropriate for the size of your kid. We're using our 3 ml syringe and we want to give 1.7 ml. Okay, so how do we do this? So <clears throat> with the stopcock, the stopcock that we have is already pre uh, set to off to the port that would be used to connect to an IV. Okay, we don't want to connect this to an IV. We want to keep this totally separate from the patient. We're only using this as a mechanism to draw up medications. So we're going to leave it off to this position because we're going to use both of these ports. Okay. So let's go ahead and take these off. Because what we're going to do is attach our code syringe to one port. And we're going to attach our 3 ml syringe to the other. And it doesn't matter which one goes on which. It really doesn't. Um, this could go down here. This could go up here. It doesn't matter. You just need them both on and you need to make sure that you're off to the port that you're not using. So if I went off here, I wouldn't be able to push anything out of this syringe, right? If I go off here, my epi, when I push it out, is going to come out here because this is now off. So you just want to make sure it's off to the port that you're not using. Okay. Now there's two different ways that you can do this now that you have this set up. You can either just push the epi plunger and you're going to see that this is going to go ahead and start to fill. Okay. That's one way. Or you can pull on your 3 ml plunger and you're going to see that the epi plunger here starts to pull in. Okay. So what I typically do, these are really stressful situations. Okay. So I'm not going to accurately pull it up the first time. So I tend to overfill my syringe. Okay. And then I go back and say, all right, I'm going to push back up until I get to 1.7. Okay. So now once I get to 1.7, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect. I'm going to give this, okay, because this is my code epi dose. So I'm going to say, are we ready for the next epinephrine? Yes, we're ready for the next epinephrine. Okay, I am pushing 0.17 milligrams of epinephrine when the epinephrine is in. Because you always want that closed loop communication that we learned about in PALS, right? You want to make sure that they know what you're giving, what the dose is, and then it's fully in. Okay, so let's go ahead and say we just gave this, right? Okay, so now we've got our empty syringe. Now what? Well, we're back to doing CPR. We were in a no shock rhythm. We're going to go another two minutes of CPR. We're going to do our pulse check, but we want to get ready for our next potential epi dose, right? All you have to do is screw it right back on. And the same thing. You can either pull on the 3 ml syringe on that plunger, or you can push the epi plunger. Go ahead and fill it up. Okay. Push it back. Get it to 1.7. That's our dose. Now you're ready with your second dose. Okay. You can leave it attached like this. All right. I always try to disconnect mine because I don't want it to accidentally push some back in or pull some out and then think that I'm ready. So I know when I disconnect it, I am fully ready to give this next dose. And I still have the rest of this um, syringe, this pre-filled syringe that I can use for future doses if need be. So that's the way that you use this method. Like I said, it is highly recommended. It's best practice, especially for these pre-filled syringes where we're needing to give really specific doses to kids. Um, so the next time that you are in a pediatric resuscitation, try and use this. We do in um, our code carts at Valley, we have two stop cocks in every of the pediatric drawers. So all of those colored drawers have two stop cocks in them. And it's for this reason. It's to be able to pull up medications using the stop cock. So please, please use this. If you want any practice, any hands-on, um, let me know, email me or call me and I can get you some time in the clinical learning lab and we'll be able to do some hands-on practice. But this is the technique. So if you've got any stop cocks in your area, you can even practice with just a regular flush as your code syringe and an empty syringe and you can at least get the practice with it. So thanks for watching and let me know if there's anything else.